In this video, let's learn about the CD4047 Multi Vibrator IC. We'll discuss the basics of this IC and show you the circuit diagram with simulation and also check how everything works practically. So, let's get started. So, let's start with the name of this IC. It is called CD4047 A stable and mono stable multi vibrator. So, first let's understand what is an A stable multi vibrator and what is a mono stable multi vibrator. To understand A stable multi vibrator, let's take a look at this graph over here. So, as the name suggests, in A stable multi vibrator, there is no stable state, meaning neither the high state or the low state is stable. As you can see here, this is the output of a A-stable multivibrator and it keeps changing between the high state and the low state. That's all you have to know for now. Similarly, for a mono-stable multivibrator, as the name suggests, there is one stable state. For example, whenever the trigger pin is given, there is one stable state and then it goes on off and again when a trigger is given, there is one stable state and it continues. So all you have to know is in a stable multi vibrator there is no stable state your output goes on like this like a timer pulse and in mono stable multi vibrator there is one stable state based on a trigger whenever a trigger is given it goes up and stays on for a particular duration now this is the circuit diagram for cd4047 to make it work in a stable and mono stable multi vibrator mode and the biggest advantage of this ic is that it requires very few external components as you can see here apart from these two modes the ic can operate in six more modes all of which is given here so the cd4047 can operate in these different eight modes but the most popular ones and the most common application is its a stable and mono stable multi vibrator mode which we will be discussing in this video so to get a better understanding let's start with the pin out of this ic as you can see there are 14 pins for cd4047 and it might look complicated but it is very simple the 14th pin is vdd this is where we can give the power to ic either 5 volt in our case or you can also go up to 15 volts and the vss is the ground pin Apart from this, there are few more pins which you should know. For example, the C represents the pin to which a capacitor should be connected. R represents a pin to which a resistor should be connected. And there are a total of three outputs for this IC. The three outputs are the Q, Q latch or Q dash and the oscillator output. So these three pins are your output pins. These two are used for power. This is used to connect a resistor and this is used to connect a capacitor. Why should we connect? I'll tell that later. And all these other pins will most of the time be connected to the VDD or the VSS based on the mode in which you're operating. Say for example, you want to run it as an A stable multi vibrator and you want to run it in the complement gating, then you have to connect the six and 14 pin to VDD. 5, 7, 8, 9, 12 to VSS. So that's what in most of the cases, all these pins will either be connected to the VDD or the VSS. Now let's understand how to build an A stable multi vibrator in the free running mode. The connections to do the same are shown over here. So as you can see, this table it's mentioned for free running mode, 4, 5, 6 and 14 should be connected to VDD, which is the power pin. And we have done the same over here. 4, 5, 6 and the 14th pin is not shown here because it is the power pin and even the 7th pin will not be shown here because it's the ground pin. It is assumed that it is connected to power and ground respectively. Similarly, you can see that 7, 8, 9, 10 should be connected to ground and 7, 8, 9, 12 is connected to ground over here as well. Now, in a stable multi vibrator, as I told you, there will be a single pulse. And for this IC, there are three outputs in total. One is the Q, Q latch and the oscillator output pin. And all of that is connected to an oscilloscope. And you can see the output waveform over here. And this time duration, one complete off time plus one complete on time is calculated using the formula time taken for a stable multi vibrator mode is equal to 4.40 into R into C, which is the value of this resistor and this capacitor. Now we have also connected an LED to the Q pin to show you how it is blinking when it goes high and when it goes off. 
what is the use of this Q latch and oscillator pin depends on your circuit. So whatever output you're getting in the Q, you will get an inverted output on the Q latch pin. So whenever it is high, this will be low. Whenever this is low, this will be high. An oscillator is nothing but a clock pulse to which all of this is synced. So now let's take a simulation look for this A-stable multi-vibrator mode. Now for a stable simulation we have used the exact same circuit we have used an LED to show the blinking and connected the oscillator a Q and Q dash pin for the outputs and if I play the simulation the oscilloscope will check it later you can see that the LED is blinking based on the values we have used here. So here we have used 22k so it is one second and you can see that the LED is blinking with one second. On the oscilloscope also you can see similar outputs. So the blue and green is your Q and Q latch and you can see that it is going up and down based on the frequency at which the LED is blinking. Now that we know how the simulation works, let's take a look at the actual hardware. So we have built this same circuit on a breadboard over here and we're going to demo it by showing two resistor options. We have already done the calculations here. If R1 is 100 ohms, we will get a timing pulse of 5 seconds which is the on time and off time combined and if the R1 is 22 ohms, we'll get a pulse with 1 second duration. So how did we calculate this? It's using this formula, TA is equal to 4.4 into RC. Let me show you a quick calculation as well. So to calculate TA, we'll do 4.4 into the value of the resistor. In our case, it is 22K, so which will be 22K. And the value of capacitor, is 1000 microfarads so it will be 1000 sorry it's 10 microfarad let me correct that real quick it's 10 microfarad 10 to the power minus 6 and if we calculate it we are getting about 0 0.96 which is approximately one second which is what we have shown here for 22k we will get one second similarly if we do the calculation for 100 kilo ohms you will get five second delay now let's see if we are actually getting that to show you we have two resistor options here first i have connected the 100 kilo ohms resistor and as you can see the led is blinking with an interval of five seconds now to show you with a different resistor value i have the 22 kilo ohms resistor in my hand let me quickly swap it out and now as you can see the blinking frequency has increased indicating that the ta time has changed and it is blinking with an interval of one second so this is how the ic can be used in a stable multi vibrator now let's go back to the mono stable multi vibrator circuit so in this circuit we have an input button which is what we have shown over here and again there is an led so apart from the three outputs like we had in mono stable we will have three outputs and one input here which is the trigger pin so whenever this button is pressed whenever the trigger button is pressed the output on q will go high and remain on for a duration which can be calculated by 2.48 into r into c which is this resistor value and this capacitor value and similarly whatever output is given on q you will see an inverted output here and the oscillator output sings all the inputs and outputs so we don't have to worry about the oscillation most of the time you'll only be using the q to get the output from this ic for the mono stable mode also we're going to simulate the exact same circuit diagram and as you can see we have a push button for the input trigger and an led to show the output let me turn on the simulation we'll check the oscilloscope later whenever i press the push button the led turns on for one second and then it turns off just like it is shown here for 400 ohms it is turning on for one second and for four kilo ohms it will turn on for 10 seconds so to know that let's quickly change this value to four kilo ohms which is 4000 ohms and then if i simulate and we'll check the graph later and if i click on the button you can see that the led turns on for 10 seconds
and then it turns off. You can also visualize the same using the oscilloscope graph. Uh, since 10 seconds is too long, I am changing this back to 400 ohms. And let's click on simulation. We'll have the graph on our side over here. Let me move the laptop a bit. So yeah, now you should be able to you should be able to see the graph. The yellow line is the trigger. The Q and Q latch are the next two waveforms. Whenever I press the button, you can see, let's try doing it again. It was not clear. Whenever I press the button, you can see it goes up and then it turns off. I have passed the simulation. So you can see whenever I press the trigger, the Q pin goes high, the Q latch pin goes low and after a certain duration, it comes back to normal and this is the oscillator pin. So this is how the simulation works for the CD4047 in mono stable multivibrator mode. Now similarly, let's take a look at the hardware for mono stable multivibrator as well. Now one more thing which I forgot to mention earlier is that we are using 5 volts to power up the entire setup and how much voltage should you use is given in this specification table. The maximum supply voltage range for your IC is between 3 volts and the maximum is 20 volt, a minimum of 3 and the maximum of 20 and the operating current is a maximum of 200 microamps and apart from that you can use this IC in 5 volt and 15 volt configuration. Most of the times it will be in 5 volt for digital circuits and we are using it in 5 volt. So when you are using it in 5 volt the input voltage voltage that you are giving for this trigger pin should be a minimum of 3.5 volts to be considered it in the high level and if you want to give a zero level it should be a max of 1.5 volt. So this is the input voltage low the maximum input voltage low and the minimum input voltage high. Apart from that we have also given some operating temperature and soldering temperature which you might need if you are using this IC in a circuit. Now let's go back to our circuit. Similarly here also we have shown that if we use 400 ohms we will get a delay time of 1 second and not a delay time the on time of 1 second and if we use 4 ohms we will get an on time of 10 seconds. Now to demonstrate we have our resistor network here. Similar to last time I am going to demo it by using two different resistor values. Let me just power this on. And whenever I press the trigger button, you can see that this LED that is the on stage is going on for 10 seconds. Similarly, let me replace this resistor with this one. Now what I have done here is I have replaced the 4 kilo ohms resistor with 400 ohms. Again, I don't have a 400 ohms resistor so I have used 4 in a series which will not give a very accurate output with the time delay but for demonstration purpose it works. Now when I press this button it just turns on for one second and it turns off. Now it's not accurately one second because there is a lot of resistance values added because I have made these resistors in series but you can very well see the difference between a 4 kilo ohm resistor network under a 400 ohms resistor network. That is all. This is how you can use the CD4047 A stable mono stable multi vibrator IC. Hope you have learned something useful. If yes, do consider subscribing to this channel. That being said, have a good day. Tata. Bye bye.